Hi everyone. Today's video is going to be on spread eagles and ena bower positions and exercises you can do to stretch and strengthen to support those. It does involve a fair amount of flexibility, so you need to make sure that you're warmed up at least to an extent before doing this, in case it shouldn't be done completely cold. But I am going to do some exercises to help warm you up and improve that motion. Okay, so with both these positions, we're looking at the hip flexors and the turnout. So we've got to start to mobilise those. So we're going to begin with some nice open the gate. I do this on quite a few other videos. We're just going to focus on rotating out from the hips. As you do this, the shoulders and the hip bones stay in alignment with the belly button tucked in, nice and strong, so that we are moving within that joint rather than rotating and twisting the core. So you can start to feel that move and mobilize. We're also going to do a few lifts to the side, so just up and down, getting the balance on the one foot to warm that up. You want the belly button over the supporting leg, okay, so that we've got that balance there. You can point your toe or flex, it doesn't really matter for this, it's just a warm up. We're also going to just rotate out the hips, isolate, keeping the shoulders still, trying to keep the ribs still and focusing on that hip mobility. next thing we're going to do is a warm up and just come down to the floor into like a little yogi squat and we're going to draw a figure of eight with our hips. The feet are as turned out as is natural for you so you don't want to be forcing it so to speak. It should be where your comfortable position is and then just a little bit of light pressure applied with the elbows to ease that without it being too much. Keeping the body pulled up so we're not collapsing and caving in so that our core again is engaged. By having a bit of an active stretcher, we're just easing into it. We are going to do some static stretching to increase that, because that's where you're going to find that extra level of flexibility. I think there's two things that commonly people struggle with the, with these positions. It'll either be, and probably the most common one, is the turnout, and the other one is being able to hold the balance. So there is an element of core strength, for sure, um, and glute strength and leg strength involved in these positions that we'll look at in a sec. So from here, once we're starting to go through it, we're going to just rock to, we're going to extend one leg to the side, body up, push back gently with the elbow. There are a lot of similarities between this and the exercises I included in the box play video because the turnout is very similar. And if anything, this is slightly easier. We're then going to rock over to the other side and push back. Keeping the body up nice and strong, we can just point the toe at the end. Okay, so that we're lengthening that line, we start to feel it through the inside of the thigh. Okay, a little bit in the hamstring at the back there, a little bit through the calf muscle as you're extending. So we're getting that long line. And then we'll just rock through. We do want to warm up your hamstrings as well because they go into extension, particularly when you're doing like an outside spread or a bower with the extended leg. So we just rock into a runner's lunge on that hamstring stretch there. Sit back on the back heel and start to really feel it through there. And again, this is working into the hip flexor, but in a forward motion, which okay, is not so relevant for the um, spread eagle, but it's still relative for the in a bower where you've got the feet positioned one ahead of the other. And in general, just protects the area and increases the overall mobility and flexibility, which is important. You can reach down and shed the feet. You should start to feel the snout through your glute as well. You should be holding it for longer than that. Body up. 
Isn't it a beautiful day? How nice is this? Because it is turnout, it's good to start with some butterflies. So feet together, flatter the feet. And if we can then just push down a little bit. Ring rig, the most strong outside that is, to get a really strong, particularly for the spread eagle, to get a really strong position, we want to be aiming towards as near to flat as you can, but it's going to take time. You shouldn't be forcing anything. With stretching, you should go to where your comfortable point is, go with your breathing, inhale, exhale, and then go a little bit beyond there, and you should to the point where you can feel it, but it's not painful. It should never be sharp. A little bit of active stretching there. We can roll onto our front, feet apart. Now I'm going to line up my feet so that um, uh, they're parallel with the edges of the mat. Again, I'm going to push my hips down. I'm holding my body up and getting a little bit of an arch in the back. We're going to talk about this um, in relation to the outside spread. We have to almost not lean in, but pull up. Um, and ever so slightly kind of arch into the curve. You have to squeeze your glutes and engage your core. It's not a dramatic arch, but a little bit enough to allow you to sit onto the outside edge. So we can get that with that slight curve in the lower back and the core engaged. So ribs in, hips under, and squeeze. To bring towards a spread position, you can then just lift the knees off and straighten out. And then even lower to the floor. So it's the same position, but now with the legs extended. You can see it's quite a dramatic arch going on in the back. Try to keep the size of the feet on the floor. We can do the same thing, lying on the belly. Starting, we could just move up with the feet together. And go as I tap my heels, I'm more ready to the ground towards the ground. And that's actually, if you're struggling with that, just bring the, the soles of the feet together, you might find it easier. To start, lowering down gently. And then we do the same on the floor. Put the feet out so they're level, they're in a horizontal position, they're not pointed, they're flexed. Okay, and then parallel with the end of your mat again. Hips both on the floor, body forward, can pull up with the upper body so we're getting that engagement there. You can also do it lying down, that would be easier and the higher you can walk it up, the stronger your position. So more turn up working. That's going to come over time. Oh, look at our sunshine. Okay, squeeze the toe, gently ease that back, so if you sit ever so nice and sit a little bit more, get on your knee like as level as I can, stretch out, do my thing, and then roll body forward and put the knees on the ground. You can of course do this a more advanced version in a full straddle position. So either half start you off, or if you're a little bit more advanced and more comfortable, you can open out. We're going to keep the alignment with the thighs, the two quads, and the front of your shins, and the feet position up, or you can start to walk the foot forward. to let that drop in. If you can, then you can actually rotate out even more. So we're bringing the sides, the outsteps of the foot towards the mat and keeping that alignment. It's going to go through. And that's a bit more relative to the spread eagle. 
plus there are variations as well on this. So you can take your arm over, look to the front, out to the side to get underneath the body, uh, stretch around the body. That'll all help because Red Eagle's in the balance position, so they can get with the elbow in front. They can look up. You can turn towards my shirt. that we need to strengthen a little bit. So we're going to do a little bit of the upper body strengthening. So on the belly, we're just going to lift the feet off the floor slightly, engage the glute. So we've got that little bit of the arch in the back, the shoulders are up, the arms are extended out, and we're going to keep strengthening. So you can do this with your feet turned out like the, the spread. Position. You can also lift the foot up on the floor nice and slowly one at a time. Again, that's going to work into your glutes, which you need which you need to be strong in order to hold your position in a bow or a spread. So continue to work the flexibility. By the way, I'm sure you can hear the neighbours are cutting. Okay. Um, so continue to work the flexibility. We can do some plies from ballet in a first and a second position, and then also a fourth position. So first and second are going to help you spread. Fourth, I need to be careful. Will help your inner balance. So we. This is where we think about how we rotate out. Okay, it's a really good way to start. We bring with our feet in. Give with our feet in neutral. I want you to think of rolling the joint in the hip. So it rolls out and everything moves as one. Like we said, said about on the um, on the straddle, everything's aligned. So hips, front of the quads, knees, shin, over front of the foot, out to the toes. Okay, and our shoulders match on top, our ribs squeeze in, our hips push under. So we've got that band around our waist and we pull up tall through the center. When our heels are together and both feet are equally turned up, that is a ballet first, okay, or like a V position in this case. You can just do some little demi plies to warm up. So a plie being a, a gentle, uh, a elegant bend in the knee. I'm going to just keep the other hand here. You can do this free from, um, in center free, or you can hold onto something. If you are going to hold onto something like a bar or a chair or whatever, you shouldn't be gripping it. It's just there as kind of moral support and um, it shouldn't be for me to rely upon, so really your hand should rest there, it's not clasping. Do maybe five or so, even ten of those, just see if you can. And then we're going to go down to a grand plie. Here, what we do is we go as low as we can with the heels attached, then we roll the heels off and we maintain the turn up. The key thing is that you maintain also the body position. So my shoulders are still over my hips. I have not came forward at any point. My core is engaged. I can really feel it in my quads and also in my glutes right now. And this is just as strong. And then I rise up and replace the heel. Okay. So a demi as a half. And you're really using that to practice and focus that position. And then the full plie goes all the way down. If we extend one foot out to the side, it goes into a second position. This is with the feet wide. Your natural second is where you can extend to without you feeling anything twisting up here. So you're turned out, but it's not forced. You're not having to compensate with shoulders or turning your ribs. It just goes along your line. Over time, we want to be trying to work that by keeping it nice and strong, keep the glutes engaged, and it'll gently increase. Okay, the concept's the same. Demi plie, halfway down. When you do full plie and plie in second, it's very similar to an inside spread. Okay, when you're first learning, it goes all the way down the front one a little bit now. 
Okay, again, the body stays up. This time the heels are staying on the floor like we do in skating. And you're gonna just see my dog's tail, I think, <laughs> walking through the front of the screen. And she didn't stop to say hello. So we're going down and hold up. And then pull up. Focus on keeping that bottom right so nice and hard as you do that. So again, four o'clock. So we're going to use the fourth position. This is going to help build up for an inner balance. Fourth position brings one foot in front of the other. The heel of the front foot is ahead of the instep or just to the side of the instep of the back foot. Okay, the upper body, exactly the same. Plie and lift. Plie and lift. Again, in a demi plie, the feet are on the floor. With a full plie, the heels come up like they did in the first. Don't go too wide to begin with. Okay, really uh, a four foot position is not as wide as a bower, but it's a good way to work that foot. For a more intense version, again, we can go to a fifth position. This is something that will take time to build to. You can start with third, which is with the heel to instep and the feet together, or fifth is heel to toe. That's a very strong turnout. If you can feel it twist and if you can feel your body pulsating, you're not ready for it yet. So you go with third and then gently close that third fifth into the point that the feet are ideally with each other, which is very hard, it's a very strong turn up. And again, plie, there, making sure the knees bend over the toes, good enough to go down for a plie, okay. and of course you should practice both of those four and fifth, I'm going to do it that far, this side, and with the other foot in front. If you do it without a bar, you can it really test your balance, and that's a good thing because one of the hardest things I've said about this spread eagle is your balance. So I'm going to keep the arms out over the head because it looks really nice in a spread eagle or a bow to have the arms over the head. You might even practice that back bend for those beautiful bows that lean back, maybe not into a rush. Gonna use this. I'm gonna go back to the floor. If you have a resistance band, this is ideal. If not, you can do this just holding your foot. We're gonna do like a worst down position. Okay. Um, and we're gonna pull the foot up, put the other foot on the floor, turn it out. just do that foot free but we're aiming to show the inside of the foot forward on both so that we're holding on both in the steps keeping the turn up the side. And I want to get the outstep of the foot on the, that's on the floor touching and the outstep of the lifted foot facing towards the floor. So again you've got that rotation and you can use the strap, the, the resistance band, to grab, to control the lower end so you don't need to do more and more turn up so you want to do it from the bottom and then use it to extend you out.
you want to do to strengthen the inside of your hip flexors because they are put in vulnerable in position is if you do have a resistance band once you've done some of the open gate warm up that I did right at the beginning pop it round the chair if you want to pin a few of these oh that's clumsy bring your foot round and then this is not going to be strong enough this chair you need something heavier but I'm just going to pull it over but basically you're going to take your foot forward slowly and resist the coming back. The aim is to keep the body strength, ideally a much heavier chair than that so that you get squats and stuff on top of that one up. Um, but the aim here is to work the inside of your hip flexor and strengthen it to protect it. Also the same going out, you can practice that turn out there. Start with the balance, it's a bit easier. You're gonna think of the back foot out and the front foot actually stepped forward. Okay, rotate it out from the hips, pin it up to the core. Okay, you can start with a bend in that front foot and then gradually work straight and out and even in between once you work to the back. easier position when the knee bends. The aim is to keep them as much as close to parallel as possible. You can sink up to the other side. You will find that one side probably forms an easier position than the other. You can judge how close your turnout is based on how parallel to the mat you are. The lean back is optional but looks quite pretty. When you're on the ice, a good way to practice it is to swing through with, the, with what is going to be the back foot. So you prepare the edge on the front foot and then you can step it back. As you swing through, try not to let the upper body twist. So you square up to the side you're going to lean up. <laughs> okay, I just trod on a worm. That is very funny. Um, ew. <laughs> so I probably do about that. Swing through, and then arch back. And that's one of the hazards of doing it outside. Um, spread eagle. out. So we're going to roll out and keep it even. Step side to side. Go forward. Nice and strong. Shoulders over hips. Push the pelvis in front. Have your bell there. Practice if you want. Um, Glutes engaged. Start off with the knee bend. So just drop on. So start with the, the uh, front knee spread and then gently rise up. Pushing the pelvis forward. And maintaining the turnout go as high as you can without having to twist so if you can only get to there then that's your start point and you can work on it day to day don't force it out so that there's pressure going through the knees because you have to protect those what we need to do is make sure that alignment stays strong and your knees are not dropping inwards at any point See there's a little bit of an arch back. Think of the um, heels pushing through along with the pelvis. Uh, lengthen along the hamstring and squeeze the glutes. And that's your uh, raisel. Alright everyone, um, hopefully there's some useful things there that you can use. Okay, you uh, watch me nearly try to worm. Also. 
olevan päivä ei vaan saanut 